Bienvenidos a este su espacio. Pregúntale a la abogada en su página de internet, jessicadomínguez.com. I am recording this video on August 15th of 2012, a day that will go down in history. Dreamers, we are very proud of you. Many people out there have seen your efforts. We as a community have been following all your struggles and thank you for seeking social justice. We know that today marks a new beginning and so many people are saying that it's finally a date for you to come out of the shadows. But you know what? There are those of us that know that you came out of the shadows many, many years ago. You have been fighting the fight for years now. And what I see is that deferred action is going to allow you to continue to shine your lights, but in a larger measure. What I believe diffraction is going to do for you is going to give you a larger flashlight for you to continue shining and for you to continue to change our society. Thank you for your energy, thank you for your strength, and thank you to your parents who work really hard on a daily basis to give you a better future. I also want to thank this dreamer who came to my office today. She made this beautiful, beautiful bracelet and I want to thank you. I will keep it and treasure it. And today I'm going to be answering a question that I keep getting on a daily basis. And that question is, do I need an attorney to apply for diffraction? For most of you, the answer is no. And later on in this video, I will give you five tips for you to follow in order to make sure that you file a successful diffraction application. Even though the general answer is no, I do recommend that you seek legal counsel in the following circumstances. If you have ever been convicted of a crime in the United States or in your country of origin. You should also seek legal counsel if you were detained at the time of entry. If you have any orders of deportation from the past or you are currently facing deportation proceedings, you should also seek legal counsel. You should also seek legal counsel if you ever register any type of application or apply for any type of benefit under immigration laws that was denied in the past. There are many other instances where you may want to consult with an immigration attorney before you apply, and I definitely recommend it. Or let me make it easier for you. If you don't know for sure that you may qualify, then consult with an immigration attorney. If you cannot afford one, we have many different community-based organizations that are well-recognized who are having forums on a weekly basis, and they have volunteer attorneys who actually attend these forums to review your documents, to consult with you, and to give you the answers that you need. So please don't despair if you cannot afford an attorney. Here are five tips for you to register your diffraction package. First and foremost, take the time to review every single page of the applications. The applications needed are going to be the I-821D. You also need to register the I-765, which is the application for the work permit, and you must complete Form I-765WS to establish your economic need for employment. After reviewing every single page of the applications, my advice to you is for you to read the instructions. I have to tell you, I read the instructions four different times, and the four different times I highlighted something different, and that could happen to you as well. My best advice to you is for you to read every single word of the instructions given to you by Citizenship and Immigration Services because under each instruction they're telling you exactly what they're looking for and they're even telling you the kind of evidence that you can submit. Tip number two, if you register any documents that are not in English, those documents must be translated into English and certified by the person who translated them. Tip number three, submit your package as if it were a work of art. What do I mean? Make it really easy for the immigration officer to understand. Think about it. You don't want the officer to be going page by page looking for the evidence that you know you should have submitted. Create a table of contents year by year. Meet every single requirement. You know what the requirements are. You know what the application is asking for. Submit the evidence under every single tab. For example, let's say your table of contents says proof of date of entry, tab A. I entered the country back in 1999. Here's the evidence, A, B, C, and D. Next requirement, have you ever been convicted of a crime? No, here are my prints to prove that the Department of Justice says that I don't have a record, and so on and so on. 
Remember, you want to make this really easy for the person who's reviewing the package so that in that way they don't put your file aside to review later, but it gets reviewed now and it gets processed at that same moment. Tip number four, when in doubt, do not answer it. What do I mean by that? Do not lie, do not misrepresent, do not make things up. It's not going to be any easier for immigration to determine whether or not you qualify. If you cannot convince yourself that you qualify because you don't know how to answer a question, get assistance. The community-based organizations are going to have attorneys volunteering their time. Go and ask your questions, but do not answer a question just because you think that it's going to work. Remember, you don't want to get denied because you will not have the right to appeal. So take the time, do not rush, consult with an attorney or consult with a volunteer at a community-based organization before you make the mistake of lying. And tip number five, and I think this is going to be the most difficult one for you to follow. Do not rush. Please don't because you can make many mistakes just thinking that you should be submitting your application immediately. Make sure that you have all the evidence first. Remember, you want to make it as easy as possible for the immigration officer. Make copies of all documents. Every single document that gets submitted, it's a document that you should have a copy of. And make sure that you submit your package via certified mail. I wish every single one of you the best. I can't wait to hear all your amazing stories. Every single one of you has an inspiring story and I look forward to continue to see every one of you shining in our community. Si quieres suscribirse a Jessica Domínguez TV, haga clic en suscríbase. También puede hacer clic en cualquiera de estos videos para ver más respuestas a sus dudas de inmigración en Pregúntale a la Abogada.